Hello everyone, welcome to another matches video on a new deck that I have that's all about copying Furious Magna Ventress. If you want to see the whole kind of overview of what I'm trying to do today, you might want to go back and look at the deck tech video that I have at the uh, below, actually, this current video. Right now, I'm just going to hop on into these games. This hand is big, big, poopy, poopy, so we're going to throw it back. Uh, this one's okay. We've got the strategize to dig down. Replication cells not doing us anything with no units, but hopefully we can get there pretty easily. I mean, we've got the card draw. Yeah, we do not need double replication cell. We only have two of these in the deck. And I'm certainly not looking to have both of them with no units. Let's see what we can find here. We're trying to dig down to, if we can, is going to be Furious Magna Ventrix. Probably get rid of the Defiance, hold on to the Permafrost. I want the power cards, because if I do get, like, a Quinn or a Furious Magna Ventrix, then I'm going to need all this power. And we're fine just having this be a little bit slow. Be nice to have some units. We have quite a few, but... We'll, we'll get some in a minute. Our opponent's not pressuring us, so we're not in any real a hurry. Well-placed coin. Oof. Uh... Well, sometimes that's the way it goes. Let's see what we can do here. I mean, we get just a sketch, so when we actually get something, that should be interesting. See what our opponent hits. They might get Replication Cell. I kind of don't mind that right now, considering how unbelievably bad this hand has been. But what do you do? I think we have 20 units, so I mean, we should be drawing some. It's thing that happens sometimes. Sometimes you draw a whole lot of extra cards and you just never see anything that matters. And get a 4-4. Four, four. Sure. Hey, right after the time when it would have actually been useful. Uh, this is a really brutal start to a game, but we'll see what we can do. I imagine this is going to just die, which is a big problem, but I don't really have another option. So I guess we'll play the Magnaventrix and pray. Another golem. Okay. I mean, if it's just golem, golem. I'm very happy about that. Choose and a wasteland burger. Nice. Get rid of one of those. I'm wondering if I want to use the Justice sketch here. And I definitely have the option to leave open Orc Condem or in Condemnation and Defiance. I'm not sure that my opponent's going to attack in when they know that I have those, but... Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with this for now. It does mean that our opponent gets to get in, and they can probably get... And they'll get rid of our armor, which is a big deal. But this is the bad situation that we found ourselves in. There's not much we can do about it. Just a rough draw. Opponent keeps on top, which is very scary. I'm imagining that's the one with killer. No, this is the one with killer. And they're pausing for no reason whatsoever because that is obviously very, very easily the game. <laughs> Alright, well... Sometimes you just never draw any units. That's too bad with all of our card draw, but we'll try for another one and see how it goes. Alright, game two. We are stuck horribly on power, but we actually have units, so I don't know. I guess I'll keep. Who knows? It might be one of those days. We'll see what we can do to mitigate this. We've got the wisdom. You'd think that we would maybe draw something useful, but we've seen that that's not always the case. Magna Ventress is a really good one. Plunk can get us a lot of places. And I am not super worried about piercing grief here. So that's a good sign. 
Yikes. Not what we wanted to see. Strategize wisdom. I think I pay the debt. Wow. And hopefully we can Cobalt Waystone, strategize, maybe go again? Hmm. I'm not sure what this deck is going for. I'm mildly worried that, like, so should I try and permafrost it? But if I permafrost it, do they go for the Deep Forge plate and have a way out of this? I don't know. I think that the right thing to do, I can see. And then I'm not going to take on the debt. And I'll Rage Grafter for now. See what our opponent's plan here is. Rise to challenge the Piercing Grief. Huh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, hey, we did a thing. That's good. Slightly closer. That will actually let us get there, finally. In the meantime... I think I'm just going to take the risk. I'm not going to go Berserk just yet. Do I want to draw the card? We know what the card is. So next turn, I'm going to be at three. Play that. I have to strategize. I have permafrost. Huh. I think I'm okay with strategize and permafrost being our next plays. Maybe going into the market with this. Also an option. Because I'm going to have three after I use screw blueprints and play it. Hmm. Huh. That's not scary. So we're gonna attack. We're not going to pay the loot if we can. Sure. Join them. Plank I am more than okay with that, honestly. Now that I have the Defiance up, it's not a big deal. I think that what we do is we strategize. Let our opponent think maybe they can put something on that to get rid of the Permafrost, and then I'll just hold up this Defiance and get them. Uh, now the question is, what would I like to get rid of? Permafrost does still seem okay. I like Mirror Image. I could get rid of one of the Magnaventress. Honestly, Mirror Image might be better than a Magnaventress at this point. Hmm. I like having Emerald Waystone because we do have an Orene Scepter in here that I need Triple Justice for. <sighs> Tough one. Get rid of the mirror image. Finest weapons uh -huh. in area. Ah, the meltdown. You will pay for your crime. And the kill spell. So, I'm going to go ahead, use this, and I might just get rid of Plunk. I'm going to get rid of Plunk, and I'm actually going to grab Quicksilver Mirror. Give one of the Furious Magnaventrix Berserk. And this is where I maybe should have kept that mirror. And we... 
I'm gonna go for the Berserk one. I was wondering if I should wait a moment, just in case they have removal. But I think this is good. We're threatening so much damage with Magna Ventress. Magna Ventress. Alright, fair enough. Frost in the light. Still seems like an okay spot for us to be in. Cut the mirror and attack. And then we can just have Magna Ventress forever. They're at that Deep Forge plate mana now. And we haven't seen the one market thing. I would not be surprised if that is it. I certainly could have gone with the Quinn here. I think I'd like to try and get these Magna Ventress down though. And they each attack for 12 at this point. Huh. Another late night. So nothing from the market. Wow. Very nice devour for our opponent. Very lucky. But we are we've got this game firmly in hand. I wonder what they got from the market. It seems like maybe they traded it back in eventually. Certainly possible. A new quarry awaits. But this game is firmly over. Why, yes, I would like a Quinn out of my deck, please. Thank you. At this point, even a harsh rule doesn't save them. And there we go. We've got game three here. Plunk ready, Rage Grafter ready. We actually have the mana. This looks quite nice compared to what we've been dealing with. And our opponents on that 90 card special? Hmm. See what they're into. Defend the throne. Might be Mono Justice. Plank is so safe. Little awkward, but because I don't really want to block this, but maybe they'll think the other way and actually let me attack. Hoping not. I right, like I'm hoping that they do. I'm hoping that they don't attack here. I actually don't want to sit and trade back and forth too much. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't think they need a Kako. Awkward plunk moment here. Do I draw or do I play Rage Grafter? <laughs> Opponent knows it too. Interesting that they didn't attack, they weren't gonna block with it. I'm gonna draw this time. Rage Grafter is good, but if I can just get down to like a Magna Ventrix or a Magna Ventris, sorry, or a Quinn, we can stop this 2 2 in its tracks. Or not. I mean, Magna Ventris still will eventually start stunning it, especially with all of these mirrors. Okay. Opponent is going very hard. Plus, uh -oh. See how that works out. Another mirror image. Of 
just trying really hard to get down to what we need. We do have the ability to grab, like, an ice bolt here if we need to. <laughs> Alright, sure. Wow. Huh. I am fair enough. I think I take it because I need the ice bolt, probably. Wild. Yeah, I mean, sometimes what do you do? Uh, huh. Get a trade. No. Point really does not like blocking. No Magna Ventress, no Queen. We really need the Quinn or that Magna. I can go ahead and access our market next turn and then just Ice Bolt immediately onto the Flyer. This is some wild stuff to be losing to right now in a 90 card deck. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna come out? Could be absolutely anything next turn. I'm a little worried about the War Cries, but I have liter legitimately no possible clue what they could actually play next. Inquisitor's Blade, it could be a, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the 1 2 Trickster. Like, it, it could be absolutely anything with what we're seeing here. Triple Rage Grafter is subpar. Hate having to do it, but I do need to get rid of that. I'm very worried about them attacking back here in a lot of ways, but also I need to find one of our actual units that matter. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh well. well. I mean, we're digging. Do what we can. Our opponent's basically in top deck mode. Like, they're pretty close. There we are. At this point, we can get in with everything. Hope for a trade. If not, that's fine. I'm gonna skip both of those. We've got them low also, and now we've got a Defiant set up. So if they try and do, like, another find-the-moment weird play here, we get them good. I've been spotted. Okay. Huh. So that's the, if there's an even number of units, then they all get double damage, and if they have an odd number, then kill them all. Uh, all of my units had Aegis. <laughs> GG's? GG's. And we're not gonna bother to, like, rub our opponent's face in it with Quinn or anything, but... Good, easy game. Whew, got a little bit dicey there with that, uh, Decimate in the Find the Moment. Find the Moment. I was slightly worried about that one. Hmm, this is not a hand that I am particularly excited about keeping. Although I do love seeing 117 cards out of our opponent, which is a interesting number. Keeping this one because of the strategize, although I am worried about a repeat of game one. 
thankfully. Not quite. Don't have any protection for it, though, so if it dies immediately, we are in a lot of trouble. It's one of the reasons that we actually have Orion Scepter in this deck. I don't love Orion Scepter all the time, but when it's good, it's really good, and it should be helpful here. Uh, get rid of the Clutch Mate or get rid of the re Replication Cell. Or just Defiance. Maybe it's Emerald. I'm going to get rid of one of the Waystones. We're already going to get Aegis already. I like having the Clutch Mate to use first, and then this to use next. That way, if they do have removal... Like, I should be able to try and get something, and that's a world fire, huh? Hmm. 120 card world fire. World fire on turn four. As you'd expect. And let's hope that it's nothing too awful for us. Like, if this doesn't kill the Furious Magnaventress, probably okay. Ah, I see. That's cool. Oh, I don't know why I did that. I needed to make the copy first, and I'm just being very silly. The worst part is because this actually gives plus one, plus one, so I'd want those as the replication cell ones. I might just go ahead and replication cell here... No, then they're just going to attack. Defiance didn't do enough. Um, I missed out on a lot of damage. Is what happened. I missed out on another three points. Sorry, four points because of the plus one, for, plus one from the clutch made. This ends now. Okay. Interesting. Now I wish I had selled. Keep the Wisdom on top. We can use that and the cell if we have to. Plating, sure. This sure is a lot of weird cards. We're, we're getting a lot of these games where I have no idea what our opponents are doing. It's super, super, super hard to figure out what to do and what to play against somebody who just has, like, 145 cards and they're just full of random stuff that you would never expect to see. Things that just don't work together at all. It's not easy. Uh, I'd love to Quinn sell, but I can't. I'm one short. Mildly tempted to wait, try and get them both at the same time, but that seems extremely dangerous. Because who knows if I'm ever going to get it. So maybe I Quinn try and hit something good off the top of their deck. Be a little bit sad. Sure. That is a miserable hit, although. What is happening here? Okay. Huh. I'm... Trey confused. Love to get rid of the World Pyre. Have to get rid of that. And we're at the point where World Pyre is not doing a whole lot anyway. You're mine now. This has been a very strange game. And I could replication sell that, but that seems less than ideal. Instead, we've just got this condemnation. We can scepter them and stop them from playing spells again, which is pretty good. I 
I'm gonna hold on to that waystone just for a moment. I don't really love doing that. Hello. But if I wanted to go back to the market, it makes sense. Now we've got something. I'm going to put it on now. And we're going to hold back to block. We have the Defiance, but it seems better. Yeah, and that's the game! <laughs> Opponent saw exactly the writing on the wall. That was a close one. What a good game. Whew. It's finals time. We need one justice and a dream. <laughs> this looks pretty close to what I'd like, though. Got some good stuff. I mean, Rage Grafter giving one of these Berserk is a really strong play. Oh, nice. Okay. So here's a quick thing. Um, Sinister Rumors is a very cool card. It has a lot of utility. It's very good even, I would say. Uh, being able to kill an exhausted enemy unit is really nice. Drawing a unit from your void is really good. Uh, making an enemy player discard each copy of a card in their deck is... Pretty miserable. Um, so if you see here, I mean, they picked the wrong card. They only got two of them. There's no idea if those cards were actually good for our hand or not. They don't know if I would have ever drawn them. I don't know if I'd have ever drawn them. Um, it, it just doesn't do a lot. That being said, I do think that it has its uses. When you realize that your opponent might be on like some kind of combo where you absolutely need to get rid of something, perfect. That's the time that, that comes out. But the third row of text from that card should be an edge case and not your first move. I'm going to get rid of one of the Quins, and I think I might take Ice Bolt, because I might want to Ice Bolt our own stuff here. Like, as an aside, I think that that is probably one of the best cards that I have seen play since I came back. And, also, and probably one of the cards that I see the most play out of, and also one of the cards that is misplayed the most, if not just the most misplayed card that I have ever seen in Eternal. It is really high up there. There's not, it's not that there's no reason to play it for the third row, but the reasons to play it for the third row are rare, and it is the number one way that I have seen that card played. Another wor world pyre, and actually, we're pretty vulnerable to that right now. Awkward. A new quarry awaits. I'm gonna quin them first to see what's going. On. What is going on? Look, I oh, and they're li they're like 85 cards or something. What is happening? Huh. There is some stuff going on. I will find it. I'm going to play this and make them have to actually have a way to kill us. Like they need a way to wipe this board or have a unit big enough that it stops all of this and doesn't get wrecked by things like permafrost. There we go. Okay. Sure. Huh. I was thinking, I was gonna say, I might regret having gone for that ice bolt, but honestly, <laughs> I'm still having so much trouble with the mana that maybe I won't. They're gonna need to keep wiping our board, though. I'm just gonna keep that pressure up. Yeah, nice. 
And if they don't have a way to stop this, I do believe this is the game, right? Because that's 10. And our opponent is dead. <laughs> that just shows you how ridiculous Furious Magnaventress is in multiples. That card gets so big, so fast, while also protecting your life total, that even while you're getting wiped out, you can definitely come from behind and still win. So, interesting final match there. I definitely worried about that for a minute once they got off that turn to seed. But not having an answer, answer for that last Magnaventurus was just enough. We got lucky having that many of them, or having ways to copy. But it turns out, all went good for us. Really happy with a 4-1 for this thing for sure. If you have some ideas with this deck, I would certainly appreciate them. If you've got like some changes that you've made for that removal package, we talked about that a bit in the deck building. If you have some ideas of like other things to put in here. I've thought about maybe doing some Dusk Raiders to go with Magnaventress instead of Rage Grafter, doing a slightly different build. I think that uh, Berserk on Magnaventress is incredible, so it's definitely something that I want to play around with more. Really hard to cut uh, Wonk Plunkin here, because <laughs> boy, this card. Just so absurd. It did a lot of work for us there. It dug us so many cards in a couple of those games. And Quinn also... Just frustrating cards to play against here, honestly. I think that a lot of this deck operates on some frustration. I'm... I wish that we had better removal options. I tried a little bit of Defend the Treasury for a while instead of Defiance. I just kind of want to spitball some things here. But that didn't seem to work out that well for me all the time. Defiance here has been always kind of medium also. One of the problems, of course, is that Magnaventress and Quinn both stun units, and that's kind of our endgame, we want to start stunning things. But these rely on us being attacked, so that's awkward. But then if we're stunning them, maybe that's fine, because we only need these to show up the early game. I think I'd need to get a lot of games under our belt to firmly get that removal package, so I think that that stuff needs to be looked at, maybe switched around a little bit, maybe you can take some removal out, play some more units. I played some Cawthons at one point. You might want to get some three drops in here, so we don't really have any of those. It's definitely some things to play around with in here, for sure. I just really wanted to go as hard as we could, using those Wisdoms, using the Strategizes, and go right for the Magnaventress as often as possible, and see if we could get that going as many times as possible during these games. And it worked really well. I'm very excited about how well this deck did, and I hope you enjoyed the videos. I'll be back again soon. I've been doing a lot of videos on Vampire Survivors and other roguelikes as well, so you can always check that out. If you like the po if you like the podcast, if you like the video, you can always just like and subscribe and stuff to find out all of the things that I'm going to be doing. Obviously, I have two different podcasts, one that goes up on here as well, and one that I do with a friend, Cobuddy, that is through their things called Can't Escape from Watching Fate, so if you want some more content, you can check me out there, or check me out on Twitch, and I'll see you again very soon.